Okay, we want to talk about the problems in marriage. It's a problem that people have always avoided. People do not want to talk about these issues, but there are problems. We want to see where are the problems coming from? Where are the problems coming? Because God said, enjoy, and the people are not enjoying. And it's exactly in the body of Christ in the church. We say God is peace, God is love. And there is no peace, there is no love. Exactly the opposite of what God said should be. The church is not talking about these things. The church is talking about money. Why is the body of Christ where it is today? We are talking about every other thing. Receive your car, receive this when there is no peace in the church. We are talking about all the wrong things in the church today. We are not talking about the most important things. That's why there's no peace in the church. There can never be peace. The name of the church is called Ecclesia. Ecclesia is a Greek word for the church means they called out. Church is not a building. Church is the people. We are the church. So church, it means they called out. The people who are called out, we are the church. The people that are called out from the world, we are the church. That means they called out Ecclesia. We are the church, not that building that we go to on Wednesday, on Saturday, on Sunday. That's not the church. But the people have been made to believe those four walls that you go to on Saturdays, on Sundays, on Tuesdays, it's called the church. It's wrong. That's why we've got problems because you think going into that building is what makes the church. The you are the church. Going in that building does not change anything. You can go covering your head, nothing changes. That's why you see people are going into that building. 20 years, nothing changes. The building is changing. They are painting the building. Today you find it white. Tomorrow you find it yellow. The building is changing the colors. The building, they are making it two stories, three stories. But the people themselves are not changing. Why? Because nothing is being done to them. Transformation, that's why the Bible said there must be renewal of the mind, renewal. There must be transformation. And transformation happens in, in your mind and in your heart. There must be renewal of your mind daily. It's a daily exercise. The word must change you every day. If the word is not changing you, then there is no transformation. Then you are not born again. That's the purpose of the word, to rebuke you, to hit you every day. That's the purpose of the word. To beat you, to, 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 to be panel, to be panel beating, to be putting you every day, rebuking you every day. That's, that's, the, that's the purpose of the word. Moses was walking with God every day, but every day was getting rebuked. That's God for you. Maybe unless you are an angel, that's when God does not rebuke you. As long as you are in this body, you, God should be rebuking you every day. You can never walk with God unless he rebukes you. Because this flesh is always fighting God. You want to eat because you, can, you want to drink. You cannot live without water. So you have got to do things in your bodily form. You have got to sleep. You have got to walk. Anything that you do in this body goes against the spirit at times. So you have got to know at the end of the day, whatever you do in the flesh, 90% is going to fight against the flesh. So you need to renew your mind. Say, God, have mercy. You are walking. You hear well the music. It's fighting against your spirit. It's polluting you. As men, you are walking, you are seeing a naked woman. What do you do? One day I was walking, we saw a naked woman. My wife was screaming like this. I said, you are screaming as a woman. What does it do to a man to me? You are screaming as a woman. What does it do to me as a man? So you can see the assholes assholes that we get as men. You probably as a woman, if you see that, just imagine as men. I am driving, I want to turn to the left, just to say, God, I did not see this one. 
you will have an accident. Where do I look? These are the challenges. Follow me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Dada Lucy, can you please read for me Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to the last. Verse 25 to the last, please. Let's start opening it up from there. Verse 25 to the last. Then we go to the introduction. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. No, from 23, please. From 23 to the end. Yeah. Amen. I'll read in Jesus' name. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be their own husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. 27 that he might present it to himself, a glorious touch, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own, uh, his own flesh but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Lord, the church. 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. They too shall be one flesh. But this is a great mystery that I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Amen. Amen. So what is the will of God for your marriage? The will, what is the will of God for marriage? Why are people living as cats and dogs? Is that what God wants? Is, what, is that what God wants? No, that is not what God wants. Simply stated, God wants people to be loving. People, God wants couples to be loving. He, because he said he wants you to leave your mother and father and cleave to your mate, to nourish and to cherish, to admire, to respect him, or her as the word of God says. That's the reason why you are leaving your mother. That's the reason why you are leaving your parents, is leaving your parents to come together. Is it not the reason, Sister Elodie? You are leaving your parents, you are leaving mama and papa. Now you say, I have found a man. Now you are coming, you are, you are, you are, you are, holding, you are holding your pan. Now I'll beat you, I'll beat you. Is that, is that how you should be living? No, it's not good. When he comes back, he should be one of ours. That is what you should be having in mind. But when you see holding a pot, you say, if you try it, the next thing, bam, you will see a black a woman with a black eye. You say, what to say? No, I, I, I was trying to clean. I hit my, my, myself on a wall. Is that what we call marriage? These are Christians. This is a deaconess in the church. We are talking about people in the, we are not talking about people in the world. People in the world they are living, they have got great marriages. We are talking about people in the church. We are not to let us leave people outside the people in the world. The Bible said those in the world are much wiser. Let's talk about people in the church. We are talking about people in the church. People in the church with where there are graves which are decorated white. Inside their rotten bodies. We are talking about the church. The church of God is rotten from outside. 
it looks nice from outside. That's the church of the church of Christ. That's why God said, Am I going to find faith when I come back? We say God, God, God with our mouth, but yet his, our hearts are very far away from them. Because I say I'm a wellness preacher. People when I say this one is a servant of God. Do we live what we preach? It is easy to come and come and say all the right things, but do we live do we live the right things that we preach? You can come and say all the right things, but that's why the spirit does not move in the things that we say. We can say all the right things, but as long as you don't live, that's where conviction comes in. You can minister to 50,000 people as long as you don't leave those things. That's why you see, that's why you saw the testimony of Sister Clay moved thousands of people, even in a death, because why? The spirit still lives in those things that you are saying. Because why? She lived those things that she was saying. That's why people are still converted by, by a testimony. She lived those things because why? Those things that she was talking about was truthful. Look at the things that you say from your testimony. Ah, I said these things, that's what, that is my testimony. I left my marriage of 17 years. Is it true? Yes. That is the testimony why people are being moved. Is it true that I did this? Yes. People, is it true that that is the sacrifice that you made? People say, no, no, it cannot be true. You said you left everything, is it possible? Every other thing say yes, and you started from zero, say yes. It's not possible. That's a sacrifice. That's what moves somebody. If it is true, then the spirit walks in it, it picks it up. Somebody say, wait, 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 wait. I'm in a similar situation. Then somebody say, if somebody could do it, God, can you give me the grace to do like what this woman do, did? That is the sacrifice. I used to womanize. I used to sleep with 15 women. Ah, this one is me. I slept all, I used I, I sleep with two, three women in a day. So this one needs to do with 15. So God, if you can, if you could heal this one, you, you probably can do it with me. That testimony alone, you say, God, can you do it for me? Because you are speaking what you, you know, the, the idea of a testimony is when you are speaking truthfully, God moves. That spirit, you have got to live. That which, that's where the um, the value of your testimony, the testimony of your salvation. When you live through what you are talking about, there is punch in what you are saying. So God, we have got the three things that you must know about marriage. Three things that you must know. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be happy. We are not going. We are not going to talk about the things that the devil, the devil is your enemy. But we must say, you have got your own problem with character issues. If you don't control your tongue, if you don't control your tongue, we can point at the devil when you have got your own problems. Your own character problems. We cannot say the devil when you, know, when you cannot control your tongue. Devil is a devil. I cannot go and drink beer and drive you drive a car and I say the police here they are a problem. The police here they discriminate because I'm a black person. No, stop blaming the police. They are doing their job. If I don't drink beer, now if they say if somebody drinks beer, they will take their license. I'm not interested because I don't drink beer. I'm not affected. If you don't talk, if your husband comes and talk and says this, you keep quiet, my lord. Say this, you will never know he talks. From that soft answer, he said, no, you will turn him down. That's wisdom. So every one of us have got a role to play. So God wants you to be happy in your marriage. He wants the two of you to be one. That's why the Bible says here, he wants you to be one. Yes, you are living as two. I did a teaching about the Trinity, covering the Lord Jesus Christ that is God. Covering the Holy, the Holy Spirit, that is God. He is a person and he is God. He is a deity. So the Bible here, they say God wants us to be happy. 
God, he wants husband and wife to be one. The Bible says you are one flesh. So if you are one flesh, you make the other one unhappy, what makes you happy? If you make your husband unhappy, what makes you happy as a person? What are you hoping to achieve? You make, you make your wife unhappy, what are you trying to achieve? I want us to see from the biblical point of view, that's what gives you understanding. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, the responsibility of building a home lies with a woman. That's why the Bible says the older women must teach the younger ones. That's your responsibility. Your aunties, your mothers, you counsel the young ones when they come. They will come and say, auntie, what should I do? You can only give that which you have. You can never deceive yourself. He said, no, no, you, you know, when he comes and do this, you cannot come, because you cancel as a Christian. You don't cancel as somebody in the world. No matter how wrong that person is, you cancel with wisdom. You don't go on the side, you, say, you, don't, come, you don't come and push the other person away. No. Element of forgiveness, element of this, say no. Look at the older generation. I got, I got my husband, he, he, was, he was in adultery. I'm filing for divorce. I caught your father seven times with a woman. Here I am. That's why you grew up with, a, with two parents. Yeah, I cannot take it. I cannot take it. The mother said, look, you see these are the two children in between you. These were from this extramarital affair that your father went out. Are you not there? That's your mother speaking. If I had gone out, you would risk being brought up, raised up by another woman. That I could not risk. I had to sacrifice so that I could raise my own children. But here we are. That was wisdom. She had to sacrifice. She had to give in. Until the man came from his temperate madness. That was wisdom. They did not have pride. It was not that they were foolish, like this young generation think they are doing. That's why we've got more prostitutes now than we had before. Women are sleeping anyhow. Me, I cannot tolerate it. You go and sleep with this one. Before you know it, in a span of five years, you have slept with 15 to 20 men. Because things are not working out. Look at the older generation. They only slept with one man. The man that married them from the youth is the man that they slept with. This new generation before they made it, they slept with 20, 30 men. That's why they call it trendy. And the Lord calls them prostitutes. You are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Because we are talking about marriage, it lays the foundation. That's where the spirit husbands come from, the soul ties. Struggling as Christians with these things, with these issues. Every day we are battling these, pro these problems because why? You need deliverance. These problems are in the church. God wants you to be happy, but these foundational issues are there. These are foundational issues. They are there. Christians are struggling with the issues. They have not been delivered. You think I was having fun. Now that fun is coming and still enjoying in your marriage now. You don't know what else to do. People are too embarrassed to come out and share these problems now. How do I go and ask for deliverance? They suffer in silence. And if you die, if you die, you are going straight to hell because it's an adulterous relationship. It's an adulterous relationship. If you die, you are going straight to hell. Believe me. I tell you in no uncertain terms, if you die, you are going straight to hell. There is another person in your life. It's a relationship, whether spiritual or physical, it's a relationship. You go straight to hell. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. We are in a relationship with another man or another woman. Mm. It's a relationship. Don't be lied to. 
They say, no, I did not know it's another man. It's a relationship. I will tell you on good, good authority, it's a relationship. You go straight to hell. So God wants us to be happy because we are one flesh. So we must be in agreement, a peace with one another. God wants couples to have a strong, consistent, stable relationship. Stable, beautiful marriage. That's what God wants for couples. Couples feel that um, the relationship is far from ideal because there are um, challenges. Challenges are everywhere. Challenges are everywhere. God wants to bless us with all the blessings that you have. God wants to bless the relationship. God wants us to have a beautiful relationship, a beautiful marriage, a happy marriage. And God has a plan for the marriage. So the second thing that we must understand is God has a plan for, for your marriage. God has a plan for your marriage. He has a specific purpose for your marriage. He has a reason for you and your partner to be together. That's why we pray when you want to marry. That's why you pray. You say, what is the purpose for bringing this brother, this sister in your, in, in your life? He has got a reason for bringing somebody in your life. Sister Esther, don't sleep. It's not good. We are talking about the important thing here. Praise the Lord. So the two of you now together have a specific place in the ministry in the body of Christ. When you say ministry, don't go and open a name, please. I've seen a lot of misconceptions. People, this, I'm tired of explaining this thing. When you tell people you've got a ministry, Sister Elodie, when I say you've got a ministry, don't go and look for a name and say God called you into a ministry. When you say God say, called you into a ministry, you can be in CHMI and operating there. That's a ministry. As a child, you can have a ministry. Your ministry is helping your parents, helping them with the things to, to be strong in whatever they are doing. If they are called into ministry, supporting them in the, what they are doing as, as parents, helping them if they are evangelists, you help them prepare the things that they need for their work. It's a ministry. That's your job to strengthen them because they reach hundreds of people, it's a ministry. So when people say, God called me for a ministry, don't go and start printing business cards and say, God called me to ministry. Everybody wants name. The next thing we see general overseer, don't rush to do this thing. Everybody goes on Facebook, we see on Facebook, general overseer, there's a name already and a telephone number. It's wrong. That's not, that's not what we mean. So it's very important to know that. So I, I'm giving this one as an example. Our children, they are, called, they are not called specifically into ministry. When we are having our conferences here, they have been working tirelessly. They are doing this, they prepare this. It's a ministry. They are helping out in doing a lot of things. They are receiving people, I'm in Germany, driving here, running around. They are busy doing other things. So everybody is running around doing things. That's a ministry. So don't say, I have not been called, I have not been called. Yes, they are not pastors, but that's a ministry on its own. That's helping. So we must appreciate. So we are talking about couples that we are brought together. In the body of Christ, we have got a role to play. When we say the body of Christ, Dadalusi is making tomatoes in the field of God. Dada Helen is making vegetables. Dada Esther is making paprika. Sister Elodie is making rice. Somebody else is making, you know, we are making recipe. I'm, I'm, I'm having, um, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping cows for meat. Everybody's doing something. So this is so, for us to make a delicious uh, meal. Everybody, somebody makes salt, salt to put these uh, dishes. 
So every one of us, it's a big, it is a big field. We, we need one another. So the one that is making salt does not have vegetables. The one that is have vegetables does not have onion. Onion, you've got to go to, to, to Sister Vivian. You want this, you go to Sister Chimmy, say, I need cooking oil. You go to this one, say, you don't have car. You need car, you go to Pastor C, why I need car. Pastor C, why does not have oil to drive? This is all benzene, petrol. You have got to go to somebody else to go and ask Pastor Samu for oil. Pastor Samu say, oh, oil. This one for oil does not have aeroplane. They go to another somebody. So that's how we need one another. So we are not in, we are not in aeroplane. This one who is driving aeroplane does not have clothes. They need clothes because they cannot walk naked. This one who have got clothes cannot make houses. They need to be on houses. This one is making house. They need to write letters. They need to telephone. So somebody is making telephone. So that's how we are in all interconnected. This is how we need one another. So we are no more less special than another. When me, who is doing this thing, I make drugs. But when I get sick, I need somebody. I need an ambulance. <laughs> I need a doctor. When my eyes are not working well, I need also somebody else who is sick who will check my eyes. So you and I, we need every other person. We need one another. There is something that you know I don't know. So you know this thing, I don't know this one. So that's why we come together. I cannot sing. That the Helen can sing. I don't know how to sing. This one can do other things. So that's how God gives us different gifts. So we must come together. It's part of the ministry that we, we should come. That's why the other one can, God can open their eyes to see certain things. I will come and teach. Ah, okay, I don't know this one. I come and teach. So when you are praying, you pray with understanding. Instead of just coming, pray, 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 pray. You are praying, yes, but you are not understanding. So, ah, okay, now I understand. The other one, come and prophesy. Now I understand when I'm prophesying, what am I talking about? This one will come. What do they do? They will come. Me, I like to, to preach. They come and preach. People come and give a life to Christ. They do it. Every one of us has got a different area of, of calling. So God has got a plan for your marriage and ministry. It doesn't mean that you are called into full-time ministry. But God has got a ministry for you. Like I said, don't go and print business cards, please. Don't go and every believer has got a ministry. Every believer is a minister. Like I was teaching before when we were doing some courses, when I was teaching the glorious um, truth, every believer, every believer is a minister. Every believer, we are called, every believer is a minister, every believer is an evangelist. In your family, siblings, you must be able to, your mother is not a believer. Your father is still drinking beer. When your father dies today, say, ah, Papa, you start crying like this. Say, may his soul rest in peace. Which peace are you talking about when your father, you know he was drinking beer? You know all drunkards are going straight to hell. Not after hearing this word, you say, ah, Father, I loved you so much. Peace is the name of Christ. He is not going anywhere. You know he's going straight to hell. We don't want to sound mean. So we've got to tell you the truth. The only truth that we can say is, tell your father, Papa, this is the word. If you, if you go to sleep and do not wake up, you are going to perish forever. Tomorrow has not been prom uh, pro uh, promised. So the best I can tell you, Papa, come to Christ now when he's still being found. He is near. Come. This is the reason why God brought me into this ministry, to know the truth. Now I know the truth. This is where you say, Papa, I love you. Tomorrow your father will be saying, this woman is wicked. This woman is wicked. You must follow me to where I'm going. The same person you're calling father said, this woman is wicked. She was living under my roof, eating my food. She never talked, me to, she never talked to me about Christ. When the people are there, it's individual. They will be thinking about themselves. Say, why were you so wicked? You will sit with me three, four hours talking to me. He never talked to me about Christ. Why? 
So don't be afraid of men. Better be afraid of God. So remember, God established the home before he ever, before he ever established the church. So there must be peace in the home, not the church. Church is called the ecclesia, the called out, like I said before. In the home, there must be peace before there's peace in the church. Stop calling there must be peace, there must be love in the church when there's no, when there's no love in the, in the home. We are putting the cat before the horse. No, the peace that we talk about must be first in the home. Love must be first in the home. Then because God started in the home with the home before he started with church. So first the church, first the home, then the church. Like God said, two are better than one. For if they fall, one will lift the other. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. So God wants you and your mate to take your place in the body of Christ and fulfill the plans that he has for you and me. But who is our enemy? The devil. How does the devil come in now? That's where, that is the place that we are going to talk now and we are going to open it to discuss. I know we've got a burning person. Dr. Lucy, I'll be giving you, I'll give you the... <laughs> so that we discuss. Here we are going to talk about why is we are talking about Christians. Oh, we are, we are not going to go out today. We are going to talk about Christians because these things are in the body of Christ. We are not going to talk about the people in the world. There is more peace in the in the world than in the body of Christ. Satan is the enemy. We have an enemy, and that enemy is Satan. And you know the same thing about the devil. He has been using the same thing that he has been using before. It, there is no new, vo new vocabulary is bringing the devil. It's the same old thing. He is ministering the same gospel, that, the same thing that he has been saying, the same thing that he's still saying. The same gospel he ministered to Eve is the same gospel he's still ministering now. It's the same confusion, that, the same word that he said. Did I not say this woman is not good? It's the same thing that he said. Until now, no new word. Yes, we say it's wise, but at the same time, when look, it doesn't change his vocabulary, and Christians are still falling, falling on that on the same, on the same trick. So, devil, he doesn't want God's perfect will in our life to be fulfilled. He will do everything in his power to thwart God's power, God's plan in our life. Please help us to be bringing people in. So we are going to talk about the devices of the devil. Is the devices of the enemy he is using to destroy the marriage, the marriages. We want to see how does how does he come in. It's very unfortunate. We know we know what he does. He uses lies in order to prevent people from this. So we know his schemes. We know his lies. So we are going to show us how we are going to use it to prevent people from destroying marriages. Devil has, doesn't have any new plants that he uses. He uses the same tried and tape. Like for men, he uses money, he uses women, wealth, honor, wealth. The same things that they've used before, they have been tried, they've been tested, they're working. So people say, yeah, devil, people say the devil is foolish. We know it's not true that the devil is foolish, but we know that he has no new tricks. He deceives the body of Christ with the same old lies again and again. The only thing that we must do is we must learn to detect, to detect his voice. We must learn to discern, to detect his voice when he speaks. Ah, that's the devil. Because he whispers the lies in our ears if we don't, we will let him deceive us and destroy our marriages. So we will learn to, re to recognize and then refuse the lies. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 44, the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. He lied to Adam and Eve in the beginning and he's been lying ever since. So when the couples hear these lies, they believe them. They accept Satan's deception as a reality. 
So we must recognize the truth and realize that the enemy is whispering in our ears. Many Christians' marriages have been wrecked. They're in a shame, wrecked into total wreckage because of arrogance, because of um, the things that we take for granted as Christians. The first lie of the devil is God's word doesn't provide healing for marriages. God's word doesn't provide healing. We know in marriages, people have differences. They, if they have what a face, misunderstandings do happen. And they will say, no, it doesn't happen. They should not, no, don't, don't, don't even forgive. Just forget, but don't forgive. These are the things that has brought a lot of hate in marriage. I will open it up, then we will be coming in and be sharing. Dada Lucy, can you tell us why is the Christian marriages in a sham, in shambles? We are not talking, we are talking about, especially even ministers. We are not talking, let us not go very far. It is in Christian homes, ministers' homes. Not, you know, we, we cannot put these things under, sweep them under the carpet. The more they are talked about, the more we shame the devil, the more people look for solutions, the more people begin to look at them closely. The more people say, ah, it's an issue. It's like COVID, it's a reality. The more people talk about it, the more people start to look for solutions. We cannot continue to pretend these things are not an issue. They are issues. We are all counselors. We have been talking about these issues. Privately, we are counseling people. I think all of us, we have been counseling people day in, day out over these matters. So from our experiences, we can tell ourselves honestly without talking about names. They say, yes, it's a sad reality. They are Christians. Why are we having these problems? Is it disobedience? Is it character issue? Is it money issue? Where is it coming from? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. None of God. I can say it's the character issue. But this character issue. There are many people suffering at the moment. We have marriages. The marriage is in siege of the devil. The devil has taken over because if you hear everywhere, the pastors, they have issues. Even churches are breaking because of this issue. There's disagreement, there's something. Financial is included and communication, disobedience, you know, lack of respect for each other. They don't sit and look for the solution for what the problem is. Everyone wants to, people have just started to go two ways apart. One is thinking about that, this one is thinking about that. I'm working for that, I'm saving for that, I'm saving for that without putting together the minds of saying now, in our, this is a marriage, it's a one body. The Bible says, like for a woman, it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. A man being the head of the house, he manages everything. He's the one, he's the manager here. Everything has to go through him to the wife has to come through him to the wife and the wife has to receive what the husband is putting on the table. So he say, receive and check about it and say, okay, this, this thing we have to go, this direction we have to go, then there should be an agreement. So we have lacked unity in the marriage. We have lacked friendship in the marriage. Communication is lacking in the marriage because if you, if you don't have friendship, you cannot agree with anything. So even if you pray to God and you don't have friendship with your husband, that means you don't have friendship with God because the Bible says, 
the husband is the head of the wife as even as Christ for the church. So that friendship, that relationship is not about marriage. You know, people, when they talk about marriage, they talk about bed, sex, and children. That's just part of it. But marriage is a whole package. First, you can, that relationship, that friend, that person should be your best friend that you can tell everything, he can share with you everything, you can put in everything, you know him in and out because you're afraid to talk with a friend every now and then. That's a friend. And that's why, you know, if you don't agree with your husband and you're going on your knees to cry to God, oh God, help me that, oh God, you think God is going to help because the first ministry has failed. So I don't think God is going to enter and answer that question here before you start settling the first issue. You know, some problems can come in the family. You can have some problems while not knowing the source of the problem. You can have issues, let's say sickness or it's but God will tell you first, go and settle your marriage. Before you know, you start that, you start asking him what you want to ask. So God will not settle your problem if your marriage is breaking apart. You can't ask God for that while you are not having respect for your husband. Because that works one in one. So Jesus is in the marriage. And if Jesus is in the marriage, he's the one to heal you and to provide what you want to ask God to give you. So we as Christians, we... I see me, I, 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 I see marriage as a ministry and it is a ministry. I see that man being that head, that priest that deserved, deserved all the respect than anything else. That's the man that I have to, because Jesus is there and Jesus is him, I'm going, whatever I do, he has to be consulted. Has, so he's the one to give me direction. He's the one to teach me. I'm under him. I'm his partner. So he has to lead me. I follow and I help to direct. Where there is wrong, we have to set. So marriage is breaking because of friendship is not in the marriage. There's not enough communication. People, there's no agreement in the marriage. And as I people are breaking up and the character, we women, we have a lot of mouth. You don't listen. If you are talking to God, you know, God also, you just don't go, but God, give me, give me, give me, give me. And you don't listen to him. It doesn't make sense. You have to give time to listen to the voice of God. God is speaking because in that process, you're praying. He needs to speak to you. You don't have to, one hour, you're only praying and you haven't given him time to talk. So it's the same way to the husband. A husband and men that don't talk much, they talk very few words. So talk to him and give him time. Let him speak his mind. Let him give you what he has in mind. But if you talk too much, he'll shut up, he'll close up, and you never know what is in his heart. You never know what is in mind. Because you have closed him, he can't say anything because you are the one talking thousand words in a second. Why you can't give him his mind? You can't give him any time. So that brings conflict. You see the man walking away from you. You see a man not listening to you. You see a man now moving away silently. And then you say, he don't love me. He don't, don't do that. These days, he don't, but it's you who's moving away from him. So he's giving you time, do your thing. I do my thing. You and you with your mouth, with your character, you're pushing him so far away. The more you push God away, slowly, the Holy Spirit goes away slowly from your character. And if you are very keen as a woman, let me say, as a woman, because I'm a woman, I'm talking about women, pray. And the moment you are not respecting your husband, your, the Holy Spirit is moving away from you without you knowing that you are getting empty. Because of that disrespect, because of those words you're speaking, because of that character, 
So my, my question to finish the thing so that every other person can speak, sometimes I ask myself, we are born again, we have come to Christ. And if you come to Christ, you need to, we are given the image of God. And once you are given the image of God, you reflect Christ because you have the image of Christ. So everything that you had in the, in the past changes. That's why I say you become a new past. All the, all the old is passed away. But why are we now, as we are moving, instead of growing, we are still now going and picking up now all the old character and fix it again in the house of God. While we are calling ourselves, we are born again. The past is gone. We are new creation. But we are carrying the character again and bringing it back. Do you think the Holy Spirit should be there again? I don't think the Holy Spirit will still be there. He will go away because you have invited somebody else in. He lives. He's very sensitive. So if this character, God has given you, you've prayed, prayed, you want a husband. God has given you a husband. Husband comes. After first child, it was okay. The second child was okay. The third child, things changes. Now your love begins to go back to the children and you forget your husband. What do you think if you forget the Holy Spirit, you start concentrating on other things you forget? Because, because you, you feel like, he don't feel like he's needed there because you haven't put him in part of, of your marriage. So our character should change as we grow. That's why I say we need growth. Paul said you need to grow. We grow. So as we grow, we have to refuse this character that is, is, is hindering us to continue in the work of God. So why should we show ourselves first? Uh, because we talk about status. What are their status? Their status, people talk about status, uh, Christian uh, health status, and all, but we have status that people outside there, they don't see. They don't see, they see a prayerful woman, they see a, a long cloth to head scarf, but the inner character, that state of innocent, they don't see. So if you look them down yourself, that you don't forget that God is watching that car. God is watching you. So we need to change because now it's not any, this is not the time now to start. We are supposed to be running the road forward. We are not going to go back. So if now instead of going back uh, forward, we are going backward, it doesn't help anything because you are, you are going to the wrong direction. So um, I will leave it there for uh, somebody else. To me, she God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted us to read Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. The threefold cord, this is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the, the Lord Jesus Christ is very important in our marriage. I wanted to show us what the Dalusi was talking about here. He was, she's saying about, um, Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. She said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepul sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outside, but are with full of dead men's bones and of uncleanness. He said, You are like white, uh, um, white graves are outside. Inside, you are like, um, you are de they are dead bodies. They are like a casket. People say, oh, this is a white, you know, you see, you see people giving honor to a casket, a box, a coffin. Say, so what's good in a coffin is a dead body, <laughs> probably going to hell. There's nothing good about anything about this coffin. So there is nothing good about me putting on a tie like this, saying being a man of God. Of what use is this? This is the kind of deception. So when we say we are a Christian, at times this deception comes at a very personal level. We deceive ourselves. The real thing about being a Christian is 
Are we truthful to ourselves? How do we talk? Be holy in every manner of conversation. How do we speak? How do we speak? There's generally Christian or non-Christian. There's a way people speak, especially women. There's a way that they speak. When you see a woman on the road, even if you are married, I'm married, you are madman. No, that's not a man. Ah, excuse me, please, sorry. I'm married. Ah, okay, it's okay, my sister. That's what any normal person will do. They're a madman. You don't speak anyhow, right? That's how you will say, ah, no. My brother, I'm sorry, I'm married. Ah, sorry, my sister. They will try, he's just trying his luck. There's no reason to insult him. It shows maturity on your part. Instead of insulting him, excuse me, my brother, are you a Christian? Ah, yes, sir, sure, sure, I'm a Christian. I, are, you a, are you a born again believing Christian? Say, yes, 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 yes. Are you married? Mm. Ah, you hear him like this. Now you have one. Now you said, ah, okay. So, and you are truly born again. Say, yes. And you are, you are still seeing other women. Now we are putting him where he belongs. Now God has given you opportunity to minister to him. Instead of you harassing him with this, you are a mad person insulting, God is going to punish you. No, there's a way that people can talk at times. It's not, unless he touches you, well, you can react because it's an unnecessary attack on a woman. So at times there's a way that we talk. Sister Elodie, your contribution. Your contribution. Why do you think we have the problems in Christian marriages today? From the people Sorry, that, what did you say, please? Why do you think we have got these problems, Christian marriages? Problems, problemy, from the people that you see around you. You hear them shouting each other. You see a woman holding a pot. Maybe the husband, he goes drinking. Yeah. He doesn't pay the school fees for the women, for the children. When he comes back when the money is finished, the woman doesn't know what to do. And there's a fight. All right. OK, so thank you so for the question. Um, what I think is um, it about uh, the submission, the obedience. Uh, to the word of God, because God know why he said a woman should uh, respect his, uh, the wife should, sorry, respect, uh, men should respect uh, her husband. God know why he said that. But sometimes it's very hard uh, for, for women to to obey, to be, to, to submit themselves. So in, in every situation, I think we must to remember God. We must to, to read his book first for knowing his will for us. And uh, even if it, it hard because our character, if, if it's, it's hard for us, we must obey. The obedience is, is very important. If uh, the husband said, do this, and uh, the wife don't want to do, she must to remember that she's the wife and she's not the head. So what God said about So it's very important to read the Bible every day and and to know the will of God in every situation, even if it's in hard and, uh, and uh, our flesh don't want to, to obey, we must to obey. It's very important, very important. But disobedience is very bad because if the, the wife don't obey, if uh, her husband said, do this and she don't want to do, and she didn't repent herself, and she continued. It is a sin. Before God, it is a sin. And um, 
she can continue like that. Even if your husband is a, a Christian, he is a man also, he is a, a woman being. So even if he, he loves her and uh, hear God, if she continue like that, one day something will happen. So I think first we must read the word, the word of God for knowing his will for the wedding and uh, we must obey as women to obey. Even if it seems hard, even if it is something we don't like, God said to obey. Oh, the obedience is so important. That's what I think. Amen. Amen. I, 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 want, I want to give, um, there's an incident, there's a woman who has been an evangelist for over 38 years. I think she has been in the US and she had been evangelizing in North America. One day, the husband asked her to save her food. She said, you can go in the fridge, take your food and save your food. Take your food in the fridge and eat your food. She said, I'm too tired. She refused to save her food. She went to lie down. She said, all of a sudden, she just had shaking, shaking, shaking like this. Somebody just came in the room. She said, she said, come, come with me. She said, the voice spoke with authority. She said, she just found herself obeying. And the man, she started following. But she said, we started descending deep down like this, down, very dark. She said, I was seeing because of the light, the man, she knew automatically that was the Lord. She said, we started going deep, deep, deep. So when we, we passed down, 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 and we reached a place. He said, when we reached the place, there was a gate. When we reached there, we entered the place. We said, when we entered the place, we saw when we, we said, when we entered the place, oh, I felt the heat. When I felt the heat, said, he said, do you know where we are? He said, no, sir, that is where you're going to come. He said, why? I, he said, I'm a child of God. He said, no, you praise me with your mouth. You are, you are disobedient. I want to talk about, to say what um, Sister Elwood is talking about. Disobedient. Not honoring your husband. It's a true life incident. A woman who refused to save her husband. She refused to save her husband. Is the Lord yourself. He said, this is what you do. You refuse to save your husband. 38 years is saving here. He said, yes, that's what you do. You come and said, ah, this, you, I, I think it's the Dalus, I don't know who was talking, it's the Dalus. You come and you move with an outward appearance where people are approving you. People see you as a woman of God, but here you are living a different life. Do you respect him from, they say, no, you don't, you say, I'm tired, go, go and do your own thing. He said, that's your portion. Yes, here yeah, I can see you are doing this thing, but that's not how you live. You are a hypocrite. That's how you are living a different life here. Yeah. That's what people see here. People approve you here. Is that how you are living your life privately? So this is the danger. That's what he was saying about the Matthew chapter 23. It was a chapter he dedicated to the Pharisees, the teachers, and the scribes. The scribes came and said, sir, what about us, sir? Oh, who are you scribes? The teachers came, so what about us, sir? So who are you the teachers? He went to all of them, saying they were, they were people who walked out. They were sin of men. They were not people who wanted to. Who, that's why he said, whatever I do with the left hand, let not the right see. So there's always a danger when you want people to see you. That's why you see even people when are performing miracles now, they want to be seen by camera. So they just say, wait, 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 wait. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, come that so, so that the camera can capture. <laughs> and the next thing, when, when a person is waking up, you can see a person say, waking up from the dead. Waking up from the dead. It's done for the camera. Do, 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 you, do you really think a person in the remote village in Kenya where there are not cameras who are raising people from the dead, no, nobody is capturing anybody. Hmm. 
People were being raised. People were truly sick. Who oh, nobody's capturing with a camera, with a phone? Where miracles are really happening? People were reading the Bible inside out every two, three weeks. Who oh, nobody knows? And you are telling me the nonsense say I read the Bible every two weeks because we are, we are on Facebook that people are coming, people are claiming, people are like, people are putting likes. You're on Facebook, people, we have put a lot of foolish people on Facebook. You put any nonsense there, just put like, 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 like this. There are people who are not known by anybody. God has raised millions of people out there who are doing the real work who nobody knows. So you cannot be putting people, there are people who are doing the real work of God. People without resources, but people touching out lives. Not those shucks. People are saying, ah, can you bless the man of God? They are asking for money. The next thing they look of, they look at all your contacts. They are saying, ah, please, can you bless the man of God? They have done nothing up, they have done nothing for you. They are asking for money. If you could send me $300, God said, the Holy Spirit said, you can give me $300. There is no Holy Spirit that asks for money. It's God that approaches you. Holy Spirit does not come and ask me to ask the Dalusu to give me money. Holy Spirit goes to the Dalusu and says, can you give my son money? It's not the other way around. Stop being manipulated by people. God knows where, where I stay. Why should God be, why should God be asking you to, <laughs> asking me to tell you when, when it's the other way around? Is it me who has got the money or me who needs the money? Then God tells the person who has got the money to say, go and give this one money. But because people are naive, they are being told, say, God said this one. That is the naivety of people. So we need to be careful. Sister Sonia from Spain. My Piki. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I, 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 I know you've been waiting. No, 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 I was coming. I, was, I just entered now. Ah, okay. It is. I, I hope you, you understood what you were talking about. Not much because I didn't have earpiece. I ah, wasn't hearing okay. much. Okay. But if you're happy you understood, you can come in. Like, okay, like, so. like what we were saying, you said we are one. In marriage, you are one. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Okay, you want me to contribute? <laughs> <I'm serious. laughs> Amen. Okay, that's true anyway. That's true anyway. I think it's, um, it's just like a... When we talk about the oneness, is just me, me and me. Anything I do is within me. If I make error, it's within me. I can't go and start telling people in the streets, oh, I made error, I made error. So I'm sure that is the same way it's supposed to be in the case of marriage. If the other one, the other one's weakness should be within. Because if it is your own weakness, I'm sure you are not going to share it. If it is my own weakness, I'm sure I'm not going to start sharing it up and down. I'm going to keep it within me. So I think that particular one should be noted. And also the fact of openness. The place, I'm sorry, the place of openness should also be there. Open, be open. Being open one to another, I think is actually a, a, a route of escape from the tormentor. If we are able to be open, to always let things out. So the tormentor or the accuser wouldn't have a cause to accuse us. So if I cannot hide things from me, I'm not sure I should hide it from my spouse or my spouse should hide it from me. So it still makes us one. What I can do to myself is what I should be able to, to give out. Just like the Bible said, do to men what you want them to do to you. So how it is within me, I, I think we should learn to see it that one. We should learn to see it one. Nothing like it is my own, my bills, my deal. We should just let it's one. We can't change it. If that's what the scripture said, though we are still two. So we should have the fiction within us that this is one. I don't know how best to put it. 
I can't separate, even if, uh, yes, I'm dark, I have my own mat, you have your own mat, but we should just learn to see the fiction that is one. It will help us actually to sort a lot of issues, to help us actually to be more open, to help us to go through a lot of skills. Amen. Amen. It, it comes back to communication again. When you people learn to communicate, when you learn, especially communication, you, you, see, you said something. You, you said when, um, when you open up, Open, uh, opening up demands one thing, um, Sister Sonia. Communication, when you say communication, when you open up, one thing that makes people to not go out, when you learn to communicate, to talk about things between the two of you, then it does not give any room for anybody to want to go out. So the most important thing is sit down, talk, and allow each person to speak their mind it allows everybody to take, to speak their mind, not insults. Third grade insults that are not required actually. So maturity demands that you speak. You can, re you can make a point without insulting somebody. That is very important. I think that Dalosi said respecting one another, I think is very important. You can come, you can come. We don't have to agree on uh, practically on anything, on everything. So when you want to speak, you can speak but you don't have to insult anybody. It's very important. So when you speak, you just have got to speak respectfully, differ respectfully. You don't have to insult somebody. I'll give Dada Helen, then I'll ask Mama D, then I'll come back to Dada Lucy, she'll, she'll, she'll be gathering some responses. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My sister have said it, so I don't have any contribution. Thank you. Mm. And like, it's, it's unlike the day, Helen. I know you are sleeping now. It is well. Mama D. Mama D, are you awake? <laughs> Okay, the Dalusi. I conclude by saying, um, the Bible say, um, um, Adam said, when he woke up from that powerful operation of God and said, this is the flesh of my flesh, this is the bone of my bones. So it's himself. He said, "This is the flesh of my uh, flesh, and this is the bone of my bones." So, if you are one, how can you hurt yourself? Because the Bible say, "Whoever hurts his," he say, uh, "The Bible say, nobody can hurt himself. Everybody cherish his body one to one. And if you are part, your bone and flesh." Why should you insult each other? Why should you fight? Why should you not agree? Because you're one flesh, bones and every, you, that woman comes from that bone. So it's part of you. So if you love, you have to love you, your, yourself. You say, if you don't love yourself, you can never love your wife. If your wife doesn't love herself, can never love her husband. So you cannot give what really you don't have, let me say. Because if I have love for someone, I will also be loved because of what comes from me. Somebody told me, somebody was, uh, one pastor was saying, yeah, I told so and so. I said, I know this woman, this, this, uh, this is Dada Lucy. And the other one was asking, how did you know her? How did you know? I said, no, I just, I just love her. I just love her. Even if she don't have money to give me, but only the words that she gives me builds me up. So, you know, what comes from you makes somebody laugh. Because if you submit as a wife, automatically you'll be loved because that submission draws the love from that man. You have to draw something from that man. So a woman who has, who has something, there is no place you just go to, to your husband and say, you, I want this and this, you know, I want this man and this man. This woman will look at you and say, you're asking this, this from me, and when I ask something from you, you're not giving me. Do you think that man will give you? I don't think so. 
So if you want something, that's why prostitutes get love. That's why the men go to prostitutes because the prostitutes know how to give love to those men so that they can get something from them. It's a fake love, but they make this man feel that, that they wanted, you know? Let make that man feel that he's wanted. Make that man feel like I'm needed. So you are drawing something from him. You understand? You are drawing. So if you want something from that man, you have to submit. If you want something from God, you go to your knees, you cry, oh. We cry, yeah? Because you want something, you go fasting. You say, I'm asking God for this. What about that man? God has given you as your high priest and him. You can't, you can't humble yourself and say, oh, darling, I, this is what I want. You think you you not, you not honor that man and go to honor Jesus and Jesus answer your prayer, that forget it. And now if you fail in that part, know that heaven is not for you because you have first to win that place. And if you want to win God, pastor has just given us a testimony. Why did Jesus react immediately to bring this woman to hell just because of that disobedience? And it didn't, it didn't take two days, it came immediately, that very moment. Because it's very important for God, marriage is very important to him. He has set that man there. Even if you are a minister and your husband has no call, but you are the one who has a vision, you are still a wife and you're still to submit to that man. For you to progress, for you to increase in your spiritual life, you need to make correct, to correct your marriage so that God can also bless you. The blessings will come when you give God the submission to him. God will see that this woman, if I give you a, a, his, he can respect that man like that, he can do something because you are respecting God. The more you are doing that to him, the man, because Jesus is the head of that house. So whatever you're doing to that man, you're doing it to God. So if you don't fulfill the purposes of marriage on this earth, even if you say you are a woman of God, even if you pray for people and they heal, even if you raise the dead and you don't submit to your husband, there is nothing you're doing to God. So that's the first ministry. It's your husband. That's the, first, that's the first child you have to take care. If you can't take care of him, take care of him, bring him up. Even your children, you can never bring them up. Amen. God bless you into me. Amen. Thank you. I know you are trying to limit your thing. I'll still bring you if, 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 if you have something. Uh, Brother Theo, can you please come in? Sorry. I know I think your network must have tripped. Send Theo. Amen. 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 You can come in. As a wonderful topic, so I go where my wife was contributing. Just like she spoke well. So you know, just like this. This of knowledge. It takes God grace and wisdom to understand that marriage is, is just one, not two. So for you to be one, that means you want to do to yourself everything you want to do to yourself. That is what you will do. And you want something to be better, you want good thing, you want a comfortable life. That means you and your wife are going to live that comfortable life. Please, like you cannot help to yourself. That means you cannot hurt the other one. As you cannot lie to yourself, that means you cannot lie to that one that you make to yourself. So anything that you know you can do for yourself, you do it in your marriage. So that is where you can be able to have that oneness love that you yourself will be at peace. Because a brother actually advised me very well at that point. He said that if you... If you are punishing your wife, it's actually me that you are punishing yourself. Because if your wife is all right, that is where you will be all right. So if she is not all right, you think you are all right, you will not also be all right. See, you make this way with her, that is where you will be also be where. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, thank you. Wise words of wisdom. Wise words of wisdom. Sister Esther from Italy. Sir? Your contribution, the newly word. Ah, that is. I I I knew Johnny for this. You didn't do him. That's it. I just had the journey. So all the questions. Oh. It's well, oh. <laughs> Dali. It's well. Okay. <laughs> it's well. Yeah, so I just wanted us to give uh, to give hope that um, God's word, the the devil always tells the lie that God's word does not provide for healing in marriage. That's why we've got a lot of divorce today. But the divorce is caused by the arrogance on the part of women, especially in the Western world. The Western world, the Western world, because they have given the women more rights and support to say, if your husband leaves you, we will look after you. So they have got a recourse. It has brought more independence, more harm. It has brought, it has destabilized the plan of God. It's not only about the women. Do not forget the children that were born out of these marriages. Even if they look, the ch look after the children, remember, it's not the responsibility of the children, of the government to look after the children. Government does not train the children to look, to, 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 to raise them in the ways of the Lord. It's the responsibility of the father to be the priest in the home not the government. The government teach them to accept homosexuality, transgender, all the nonsense that we see is the government. They said, no, you must, you must learn to be tolerant. You must learn all this nonsense that we are seeing. Lesbianism, all those things is part of the government to loosen, to fight against God's laws. This is why you see the society is broken today because of issue of marriage, this is where the devil has got it high. That's why so many couples are hating. Because they think God's word does not provide for healing in marriage. But God can heal the marriage. There was a Christian uh, brother and a sister. They were so active in a church, in church. And it so happened that um, the women, you know, the issue of husband and wife not meeting, it came to a point where the husband was denied for a time. The wife thought she was doing everything right. This issue of following fasting, fasting, this fasting, this fasting. The husband, he went on to meet another woman outside the marriage and things happened. And the wife, the husband filed for divorce. The woman did not want to say, I will forgive you. He said, no, you can forgive. You can forgive yourself. Me, I'm moving on. You forgive yourself. Me, I don't want your forgiveness. You started it. You denied me. She forgave the husband. Say, you can forgive yourself, your stupidity. She forgave. She, she said, I forgive you. The man moved on. He went on. He, did, he didn't remarry. So the woman, I think she realized a mistake. So I think she got encouraged. So she began, I think it's First Corinthians. Let's read First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 27. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 27. I like us to read scriptures because that's part of learning. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 27. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Hallelujah. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. 
You see what the Bible is say, talking about? When you are bound unto a wife, seek not to be loosed. Those that are married. If you have been bonded to a wife, don't seek to remove yourself. That's the Bible. If you think you don't know the Bible, to, see, to say that you don't know the Bible first, it does not excuse you from the obligations. Art thou bound? If you are bound to a wife, don't seek to be loosed. Don't divorce. That's what he's saying here. And if, if you are loosed from, if you are divorced, don't seek a wife. That's what the Bible is simply saying. So you need to be very careful. Very careful about the Bible verses. Many people, when they see these things, they don't understand the Bible very well. To say, I, uh, God, I did not understand, ignorance is no defense according to law. There are many Bible verses people do not understand. So you will come and say, God, I did not understand. That's the duty of your pastor to teach you and teach you the truth. Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Once you are in there, you are in there for keeps. The only thing that can help you is death. Unless, and don't pray for somebody to die. Unless if it is God's will for somebody to die. Don't say, oh, God, will you just let this woman die? Just let this man die so that I can go to Brother John. Sister Esther Biko. <laughs> don't say, I, I, want to, I, want, I want this woman to die so that I can go to Sister so and so. It's not a prayer that God, it's witchcraft. Don't, don't make such, such, such type of a foolish prayer. Unless if you pray, say, God, me. If I pray, say, God, if you take me, I just want to be in your presence, worshiping with the angels, you know. He can give you a very good excuse, even though he knows, he knows what you're talking about. You say, you know, I do not want to be running around in, during tribulation. If you help me with that, I will be okay. So the Bible makes it very clear. If you are married, do not seek divorce. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16 says, I hate divorce. And marriage is a covenant, it's not a contract. That's why, that's why as Christians, we don't use a ring. It is easy for a woman to say, you know what? Take your ring, take your ring, take your ring like this. This one is the Bible. That's why we use the Bible. You don't take a Bible. It's the word of God. It's infallible. We use the Bible to marry. We don't use the ring. Why do we use the Bible? Why do you use the Bible? Because it doesn't change. Once you just marry like this, it's forever. That's why we don't use the ring. Don't say it's not written in the Bible. It's not written. It's not written. It's written. We use the Bible. The ring, the, the ring does not exist in the Bible. Don't be deceived. The ring, you see a person taking the ring. You can keep the ring. They will go to the court. The issue of the court is to help secure the interests of my wife. Because my wife changes the surname from a maiden, from a family name to my name. Because if, if something happens to me, she will not access anything from me. That is one of the reasons why people change the surname. That's why we marry in the court, is to secure the interest. And when children come, they need to bear the same name for easy and easier administration in a family. It's a lot easy if all of you have got one surname. Otherwise, the correct issue of a marriage is when you use this thing, court, the actual marriage is not when people go to court. The actual marriage is consumed when people, when you sleep with somebody. That's why the Bible says, flee from all forms of fornication. Once you sleep with somebody, marriage is consumed. So if you slept with the 300 people, if you are not delivered, you are married to those 300 people. So be very careful. If, if you came from the world, deliver. if you are delivered, it's okay. If you are not delivered, you need deliverance. Otherwise, you still continue having problems. So Matthew chapter 19, verse 5, it says the same thing. What God is joined, let no man put asunder. 
So the devil wants to come and tell us there's no healing in the word of God. No, it's a lie. If God said no to divorce, that means God has pro pro uh, provided a solution. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ came. He came for that. Day. Healing was part of the process of the divine for, the, for, the, for this um, redemption. So get that into your spirit, that marriage healing is part of the whole plan of redemption. The Lord went to the cross for that part of redemption. It's never too late for God. Like the example that I was giving you, that uh, Christian couple, that man, when they separated, the woman, she came back to her senses. Uh, she, when she came to her senses, she just said, you know what? Um, she, she began to reason within herself. One day, she thought, she, but um, no, she, I think the Holy Spirit ministered to her. She said, no, you cannot, you cannot remarry. He said, I can restore your marriage. She said, what? I can restore your marriage. She began to pray about it. She said it was not so from the beginning. She began to pray about it. She increased her confidence in the, in the whole process. Before she, before she knew it, there was hope. Today, the couple, they came back together. They came back together. The Lord said, I want, the Lord said, your thoughts are higher than my, he said the man had already moved on. So he said, no, my thoughts are higher than my, your thoughts. I will restore your marriage. So when she heard that, when she was praying, he said, no. She thought her mind is playing tricks on her. So when she heard, they said, what? So she began, to, <laughs> she said, she thought she had lost her husband. So God said, I want to, resp because they had already divorced. But one year later, God brought the husband back. And today, they, are, they have become the greatest evangelists. That's God for you. God, they've restored them. They are working in the kingdom of God. They are strengthening couples who have gone through challenges like this. That's God for you. So at times, God, you can use those broken people with you, people who have gone through broken marriages because now they understand it better. Through their testimony, now they can cancel other people because now they now know the tricks of the devil. Because they have gone through it themselves, they can cancel others. But then Lucy, I'll give you the, <laughs> the opportunity to share and round up your last contribution and round up to us, please. Okay. My last contribution is uh, we have to, to be sensitive. We have to be sensitive when the enemy is coming in. You have to be sensitive as a woman of God. When something is happening, you know it's the devil. Oh, what is it? You have to be sensitive in your mind and be prayerful. Be prayerful and be obedient to, to God and to your husband because that's where the devil is attacking at this moment. The devil, you think how is the devil want to bring the church to, to hell through marriage? Divorce, there are so many divorces. So if, you know me now, let me say me now, if I get married right now, I will hold that marriage with all my heart and mind and strength because of what? Heaven. I will not joke with it. So if you people, people who are in marriage, secure your marriage, secure your marriage because that's the easiest way to go to hell is marriage. The easiest way to go to hell is marriage and the pulpit. So if we come to the pulpit to preach, Let's give what we have. Don't give what you don't have. If you've never gone to any experience, you better don't begin to cancel because you'll have more 
questions that you don't know what to say. So as uh, our sister say, you yourself do to people what you will want people to do to you. Love your husband. Your husband will love you because submission comes after, uh, love comes after submission. But without submission, that man will never love you. You'll be pushing, you'll be pulling. Instead of drawing, you draw, you know, you take with, with love, you take, you ask. So God wants us to honor our marriages because he himself honors marriages. God honors marriages. That's why he say, I hate divorce. He honors it. So that's what I, I, I will conclude with. So let's hold the word of God. If we have difficulties in marriage, let's go to the word of God. Ask God, check what's wrong and solve it. Solve it, not the, 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 the pothole where the devil has come in because the devil is watching marriage like something else. Marriages are breaking, pastors' marriages are breaking. Marriages are going and sleeping around. Marriages, men are going out, bringing children in, in marriage. So we have to be very careful and be prayerful and God will show us the way because it's only God who can, who can solve our problem in marriage. It's only God who can heal marriage. Nobody else can heal marriage, amen, amen. Amen. Let's um, let's thank God for this moment.